Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Staying safe, take care of yourselves, all those kind of things. If you're new here, I'm Jim. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today is Illuminar AI again. Um, I did a video a couple days ago about kind of a quick general overview of Luminar AI. It's still in beta. I still have a beta copy. So what that means is some things may change. Everything is not done. That's what beta is. Um, the point is they have said, hey, Jim and, and other folks, not just Jim, but they've allowed us to go ahead and share some of what we're able to uh, to do in the product. So I thought what I would do is kind of walk through a little bit of the portrait workflow. Um, I'm not someone that you generally would probably come to for portrait tips, but um, I'm getting more and more interested in it. It's not really been my thing in the past, but um, I'm having fun with it. And the tools and the templates are cool. Let's just be honest, they're pretty fun. So I'm having a good time. I'm gonna show you a couple of portrait examples. I'm gonna get going. I just wanna show you how it works, generally speaking. Here we go, here is a photo. I'm in the catalog, well I was in the catalog. I double click the photo and it still shows a catalog tab. It has me in this photo. And what I wanna do is, hey, let's go take a look at a template and see what Luminar suggests for this uh, portrait. So if I click on templates, you'll see for this photo, and by the way, some of this may change, but this is the recommendation engine, which is built upon the idea of AI recognizing aspects of the photo, including the fact that this is a portrait. And it's suggesting a few different things here. There's easy portraits, there's black and white, there's essence for elegant portraiture. And you can go into any of these and click through and say, oh, I want fashionista or whatever, right? So I don't want that. I'm gonna come down here and just hit reset. You can also fave it or make adjustments and save it there as you may have seen. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll to the bottom. Uh, here it is actually. So at the very bottom, they have all the categories listed, but it's also you see them here kind of profiled. So here in the portrait, there's experimental and there's some really cool ones here. I like this burned film. There you go, you can kind of see that's a quick and easy application. And one of the cool things about it is it's got a light leak built into it um, and that's via a texture overlay and i'm going to show you this here in a second but i'm going to use that as my basis and i like that look but you know being the kind of person that i am i want to kind of customize it a little bit i don't want to just say hey there's a one click and done because i prefer to just kind of continue to edit and refine my photos maybe like you do and if you don't if you just want one bleh, if you want to do the one click and done Super great, go for it, it certainly works. Um, here in edit, um, there's the portrait tab. I might come over here. By the way, uh, any of these little tabs that have the circles above them, if you're on it, you can't see it, but you can see there's a little dot in the upper right corner above essentials and a portrait, that means some tool on that tab has been used. Um, so you can see it's used light, structure, details. Over here, it's used mood, which is basically LUT. Um, LUTs are in there and portrait, of course, because it is a portrait. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna do a couple of things. I'm gonna say, uh, hey, let's go pull down these highlights a little bit. I'm gonna pull that back, it's a little bit too much for me. I wanna increase contrast a little bit. I'm gonna go over here to Structure AI. I'm actually gonna add some structure. The great thing about Structure AI is it's human aware, so it's gonna crunch up some of the other stuff, but it's not really gonna crunch up her face, which I think is great. I'm actually gonna give it a little bit of accent AI, just a tad. There's a little bit of details there. I'm gonna pull those up as well. Those are not human aware, so that actually may pull into her uh, her face and skin, but I'm not doing very much, so it's not like it's really gonna make a grungy portrait because I don't wanna do that, um, but I def definitely wanna do something that's kind of non-traditional. So there's all that. I'm gonna pop over to creative. You can see it's got that LUT. I'm fine with that. I'm gonna leave that. And portrait, here we go. I'm gonna go into face AI. Let me zoom in. These are uh, one of the, I'm gonna go to 100, just so you can see her up close. Um, you know, striking face, great pose. I think it's just a really cool scene all the way around. I did not shoot this. This is from Unsplash. I'll put a link to the artist down below. Um, but face light, uh, you know, I love that. I'm gonna go ahead and increase that a little bit. I don't need to slim face. I mean, if you look at this person, obviously there's no slimming necessary. One thing I do wanna do is change these eyes to blue because the blue, I think, goes really well and connects the jacket to her face, I think, in, in, a, in a colorful way. So iris visibility, I don't wanna to go to 100, that's way too much, I wanna pull it down a little bit. Um, iris flare can give a little bit of pop to those eyes, um, and eye whitening can as well. Eye enhancer, of course, gives a little bit of like that 
um, clarity, for lack of a better word, to that. So I think converting the eyes to blue and making some of those changes has helped kind of tie the uh, the, the colors together because there's a lot of orangey red. And I think having the blue in there with her eyes and her coat look great. So let me turn that off. If you look at her eyes, there's before and there's current state. To me, that looks believable. Um, it may not to you, that's fine. And, and we may have different um, ideas of what believable is. If it's too much, you can always just reduce iris visibility and take it down. I kind of liked it where it was. Um, and then mouth, I'm not going to mess with her, um, her her lips or lip saturation, anything like that. But I might add a little bit of teeth whitening just to bring that up a little bit. Now, skin AI, uh, this is where you could just do a little bit of that uh, kind of skin softening. But one of the great things about it is it's not going to really over plasticize uh, her face or her skin. You're still going to see the pores and that texture, which is, you know, it doesn't dehumanize. Um, skin defects, uh, you can click on that and, you know, it's going to pull out some of the freckles. I actually don't like that in this portrait. I think that's part of what makes her her. So I'm going to leave that and maybe a little bit of shine removal because there's a little bit of uh, brightness on her face some of which I did add up here with face light, which I could take back down, reduce that, but I kind of like a little bit of it. It doesn't bother me uh, in this photo. Now, I'm gonna go to body AI, and let me show you something I've been kind of playing with. I'm gonna fit to screen to kind of back up. Clearly, this is a, a, a small person, not a large person, and um, she's, she's pretty thin, as you can tell. Um, body AI allows you, if you go to the right, to to sort of squish that in, right? Uh, make her appear a little bit thinner. But I think in this case, I'm actually gonna go the other way and create a little bit more size. I think that actually goes better in this photo um, by making her a little bit wider than it does make her thinner. So there it is beforehand. You can see that and afterwards, it's, it's subtle. Um, and you probably wouldn't even notice it looking at the picture if you didn't know that I just did that. But the other thing that's cool is abdomen. And I showed this in the other video, but um, Sure, this can be used for like a slimming kind of thing. Like I, I always want to hold my, my gut in, frankly. But um, here's something that I think is really cool. The way her shirt is kind of bunched, you can actually use this to kind of pull that shirt in a little bit. She clearly does not need any assistance uh, pulling in her stomach, but pulling in the shirt, the way it's kind of ruffled at the bottom, actually worked really well with that abdomen slider. So if I turn that off, you can see the before. There it is, and then the after kind of creates a little bit of a pulling in of, um, obviously it pulls it in because that's what it's designed to do, but I think it works really well. Even on a person that doesn't have a stomach that's noticeable, I think that works really well. Um, I did tell you I was gonna show you the light leak. That's on the local adjustment or local masking tool, which is here. They've told us this is gonna change. I don't know how, so I'm not gonna demo this, but I wanna show you what it is. You can just uh, go to click on that, and you can click on add, and then you can add multiple things. In this case, they added a texture, um, and that texture includes the light leak. So if I came in here and turned this off, there you go, you will see the light leak go away. And frankly, I think the photo looks great even without it, but I like that. So that was added. Um, via the local masking tool and built into the template. So that's part of the cool stuff in Luminar AI. Um, I'm done with this portrait. Let me show you the before and after. There's before and there's after. I'm gonna pop over and do one more real quick. Okay, here's another photo from Unsplash. Again, I'll put the link to the artist down below. I really respect and appreciate the fact that people provide photos on Unsplash. This is not a sponsored video or anything, uh, it, but if you wanna practice portraiture, Unsplash is a great place to go get photos. You'll find these quite easily. If you just go to Unsplash, type in portrait, these were a couple of the first two that came up and I really liked them, so here they are. Okay, so the last one I went to templates. This time I'm gonna go straight to edit and I just wanna do some basic edits on this one. I just think the photo is really cool. The person's got a lot of character, really distinctive face and hair and eyes. Um, and so speaking of eyes, that's the first thing I wanna do. He's already got blue eyes, but I just wanna make him a little bit more blue. So I'm gonna pop that a little bit. Um, and I think that's believable because, you know, again, believable is my opinion. You can disagree, that's fine. A little bit of iris flare perhaps, uh, and maybe a little bit of eye whitening. Um, I think I would probably leave it at that. Actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, there's no red eye uh, and there's no real dark circles. Um, I might do a little bit of face light just to gently kind of um, put a little bit more light on the face. I don't need to do anything with the mouth. I think for skin, I would maybe give it a tiny bit of smoothing and a tiny bit of shine removal, um, but that's about it. And I don't wanna do anything with body because there's really obviously nothing that you can see there. 
Um, from here, I might go over to the Essentials tab and maybe do some basic things like around contrast, uh, create a little bit more uh, distinctive uh, separation between him and the background, which is fairly light. Pull back that a little bit and maybe just add a vignette, which is over here. And I'm, I am going to choose the subject, which is going to be his face. And I'm just going to put that right there on the bridge of his nose. Uh, and then pull in this uh, vignette a little bit. Oops. Uh, there we go. Pull in the vignette a little bit. Um, and maybe do a tiny bit of inner light. I think you want to be careful because uh, there's already a little bit of brightness on his, uh, kind of a little bit of his forehead and his nose. But you can manage some of that here with the highlights and perhaps the whites, which are down here on the light tool as well. And that's a quickie on uh, that photo, but there it is before and there it is after. You know, when you do the before and after comparison like that and you look at his eyes, you're like, okay, Jim, that's fake. That's over the top. And it kind of is. But if you're just looking at him, I could totally see a person that's, you know, what they call a ginger that's red haired and has some freckles having really blue eyes. But, you know, again, if it's too much, just come over here, pull down the iris visibility and just tame that a little bit. Um, and that would help. Otherwise, if you go really high, it, it just seems over the top. So I'll pull that back just to uh, just to keep it uh, kind of calm. And honestly, I think that looks great. The other nice thing you could do, you could just go get the eraser tool if you wanted to. Uh, pick your uh, brush radius and maybe get uh, like that spot off his face and maybe that spot. It looks like maybe he's just out of, uh, I'm guessing, surfing or something. It's hard to tell, of course, uh, because it's not my photo. But you can just erase those and just that is not creating a new layer. It's just erasing and it's a live edit. So there it is. A quick and, uh, I don't want to say quick and dirty, but a quick edit from there to there using the power of AI and some of these new tools in Luminar AI. Hope it gives you an idea of what's coming. I'll do some more tutorials around other subjects and some more portrait work as I continue to explore all the stuff you can do in Luminar AI. Just wanted to share this, my friends. I appreciate you watching. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button down there. Give me a thumbs up, like, share, comment. And by the way, lots of comments on the last video. I'm still catching up. Um, I have a full-time job. YouTube is basically a second full-time job. Uh, I'm trying real hard. I appreciate the, uh, the engagement and the interaction. And I'm, I'm, I try to respond to everybody. Sometimes it just takes me a little while. Anyway, that's it, my friends. I'll see you really soon. Take care of yourselves and adios.